guys, how's it going? I have a zombie spear here. Check this bad boy out. It's long enough I can reach out and uh, reach right through that screen and uh, spear you. Stop you from attacking me and eating me. So, yeah, this bad boy could do some damage. But that's enough zombie spear uh, talk. That's not what my channel is really about, but I thought that was pretty cool to show you a big spear. So, you know, let's talk about uh, what's uh, an update on stuff. The gas gas, did the Evans coolant. You can check out the video. I think it was, uh, went pretty good. It's pretty easy, really. You're just changing fluid. You're using the prep fluid. You cycle through a couple times, or, or you can buy the test strips, I guess, and test the water content. But it's easy enough with the motorcycle, because it doesn't take much, just to pour some more prep fluid in, clean prep fluid, and just do it twice and uh, you're gonna have no water in it right and then put in the Evans uh, waterless coolant and uh, you're good to go you know run it run it we'll open it up take a look and uh, top it off if you need to and again good to go and when you drain the Evans make sure you drain it into a nice clean container because it's good for basically life of a motorcycle so you know you don't have to worry about it and uh, again, the motorcycle takes so so little. That gallon would last, even if I just wanted to add new, you know, like I spill a bunch on the floor. You know, it's going to last a while. So we're, I'm good to go there. But something I found out about the bike I was going through, saw a YouTube video about the power valve and some slapping and a reference to the gas gas warm. I never saw the thread over there, but I'm not too active. And... Uh, Apparently, the noise I keep hearing on my gas gas, you might hear it in my videos until the bike warms up, is the power valve is loose and flapping around. So it jiggles and it's awful. So, you know, the power valve is slapping around. So I got some gaskets coming. I should be able to adjust that. It, it should go pretty easy, actually. You just take off, take off the water pump. <laughs> so drain the coolant. Take off the water pump. Take off the clutch cover. Take off the big side cover so I got that gasket I actually got another gasket for the clutch cover because mine's original and uh, yeah just just to have it on hand I think the round cover the for the clutch for the clutch basket access I think that was like 17 bucks that's quite expensive for just what that gasket is and then the bigger gasket was like 22 bucks 24 dollars for the whole side which is also quite expensive for what a gasket is but anyways, I got those coming. I got two of the big ones, one of the round ones. And yeah, I got a new arm unit that's up in the upper power valve, you know, where the rod comes through the, the top of the engine and hooks on through a post with a nut on it. So I got, a, I got a new one of those also coming. I think that was like $28. And uh, mainly because when I did do the top end and did all that, I, uh, when I put on the, the uh, nylon nut, lock nut, it went on and it wouldn't come off. So I think it's stripped out or something. So if I have to cut it off or whatever, this way I have a new part there. If I can't remove that bolt while keeping that unit intact. Uh, better safe than sorry than to do all this and then he has to order that part. And, you know, it takes even a couple more weeks. And, uh, you know, I just want to have it done all done right away it sounds pretty easy so I'll be bringing you that video so if you're if you have a gas gas and your power valve makes noise hopefully I'll be able to show you that fix uh, you know I'll do something different with this video you know I'm gonna kinda just go through a format so the next thing is I'm gonna do a shout out to a company and that is the Rocky Mountain ATV motorcycle uh, guys out there in Utah, they're awesome to order from. If you haven't ordered from them, check them out. I mean, at least as far as Colorado, me, because we're so close, I order something, get it within like a day or two. It is so quick. And uh, those guys have uh, just been great. They support trails. They kind of do some of their own type of rides. You know, they have a hooked on Phoenix, I think was a uh, Rocky Mountain ATV motorcycle ride. And, uh, you know, so great ordering, you know, they have fast delivery, 
And the best part is you get rewards cash. So, so you order a bunch of stuff through them, you build up that dollar amount, and it will ask you like, hey, you want to use your $2 on this order or, you know, $10 or whatever it's built up. Um, my friend had like 100 bucks on there, I think he had, uh, the FLB club. And, uh, you know, <laughs> it's pretty good. So you, the more you order, the more rewards you get, and then you can just apply that to a purchase. So sometimes that's kind of surprising, you know. You, you want to order something and you have 20 bucks on there. And it's like, yeah, yes, I will use that. <laughs> you know, you you were expecting to spend like a hundred bucks, and now you're only spending eighty. You know, it's, it's great. And the next thing is a shout out to an organization. And this time it's going to be Stay the Trail. That's mainly a Colorado group, but you know, I think the principle behind them is true. No matter where you are, you always stay the trail. You uh, don't go off trail. And that is for all trail users, you know, whether you're a hiker, ATVer, equestrian, a mountain biker, whatever it is, you try to always stay the trail. Now, obviously, in reality, there's times when maybe there's this huge tree that fell down and the branch is po poking out and you can't really, you're by yourself, you can't lift your bike over it, uh, branches are sticking out, you can't really jump it or... You know, get your bike over, and the easiest method is to go around. But the idea is, at all times that you can, and your safety, you know, you have to weigh a lot of things, you stay the trail. And it's a great group. They go around. It's a nonprofit. They just educate. They don't fight for the legal matters. We have other groups that do that. And maybe I'll do a shout-out to one of those groups. But, yeah, stay the trail. Thank you. Great group. And uh, the next thing, I'm going to do a shout-out, or not really a shout-out, but I'm going to mention a trail, or a trail system, when I do these videos. So this time I'm kind of explaining to you my format here. I'm going to make more videos and do different things. But uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be a local trail. It's called Mount Rosa. It's off of uh, Gold Camp Road between uh, Forest Road 379 and 381. And it, it's really short. I don't know how long it is, a mile if that, but it's like really steep and rocky, the one direction from uh, west to east. And then east to west, it's just steep with all these switchbacks. And that side is hard just because <laughs> it's just hard because you're continually going up this steep, nasty trail. The other way I actually find is easier because it's just this rock, rocky ledges and some switchbacks, but hey, if you can handle the, the rocks and get up over that stuff and clear sections, you get to the top pretty quick. The other way, it seems like it goes on all day. It's an extreme trail. It's not for a new rider by, by a long shot. Now, saying that, I have taken the gas gas up there a lot. I've taken the XR650R 650, 650R up there once, and then that was before I had the recluse system on the XR. So I might actually try it again with the recluse system and just compare it, because it was uh, it was pretty hard without it. Uh, with it, I think I will have a lot easier time going and be able to just log with the throttle up sections. So we'll see if I get to do that in this coming year. But that's an awesome trail. If you're by Colorado Springs, Colorado, check that out. And there's only so many people that can ride that trail, and it's like one trail. But if you have a plate on your bike, your best bet is to go to uh, go Gold Camp Road out of uh, the Broadmoor area. And there's a section that's closed because a tunnel collapsed, but it's open to motorcycles and ATVs, surprisingly ATVs. So pretty much 50 inch, I think side by side. I don't think a huge side by side is going to be able to get over the tunnel. And a normal ATV, it'd be pretty, pretty scary really. But a motorcycle is not a big deal. The reason you need a plate is because once you get through that section that's all ATV, and you come back to the uh, Gold Camp Road where it's open, where Old Stage Road and Gold Camp Road come together, you will uh, need a plate to continue on. And 
to get to the uh, trails that lead up to Mount Rosa. So it's a good ride up, do a loop, and then ride back. And if, if I'm on the bigger bike, I, I just ride back home because I rode from home. If not, I just park the car there. It's a big trailhead. A lot of hikers, so be careful. Some people don't know that it's actually open to OHVs. So they get, sometimes I've heard, I've never experienced this, but I've heard they'll get very hostile, like sticks at you and yell at you. I've never had that problem. I'm polite. I go slow around them. And after the tunnel, there's usually no hikers and only a few mountain bikers because it's a pretty long road. It's a good distance. But after the tunnel, you can kind of open it up faster because you know there's no cars because it's shut. It's shut way up there. There's a gate. No one can get around. There is one cabin on that road. They might have a key access. I've never seen anyone at the cabin. But uh, it looks like it's maintained and used. It's just I, I've never seen anyone there. So, guys, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, check out my Facebook page. And uh, Meeker Extreme, check out my Twitter, Meeker Extreme, and also Meeker Extreme on Instagram. So, guys, thanks for watching. You take care over the holidays and uh, get out there and ride.